Okay, so we will continue our discussion. Uh, again, our textbook is uh, this one, Computer Organization, Hardware Software Interface. <coughs> so let's just have a brief recap of uh, uh, last time's meeting. Okay. Uh, so these are some of the great ideas in computer architecture. Moore's law, understand designing for Moore's law, obstruction. Uh, yeah, this one, common case pass. What do you mean by that? If you are given uh, a system and then or a problem and then you're trying to optimize a solution to the problem, you first, uh, you need to focus on improving the common case, meaning the stuff that always happens instead of optimizing for the, let's say if you have 90%, this is the stuff that this program is doing. You focus on improving that 90% instead of improving the 10% case which is not working. Right? So that's what I mean by that. Right? So, uh, parallelism, pipelining. Uh, parallelism, basically, uh, multiple processing at the same time. Parsing at the same time. Pipelining, prediction. Uh, prediction is, uh, in the book it says here that, uh, Forgiveness, asking for forgiveness is better than asking for permission. So something like uh, if you can go to, go here instead of waiting before going there. Right, so that's prediction. We'll discuss that later in terms of branches. Hierarchy of members in one three one has been discussed, and dependability is basically redundancy. Making multiple copies which is important, which is also relation in, related to the memory hierarchy. The data is located in the memory, in the L3 cache, L2 cache, L1 cache. Those levels. So uh, this is the main, somehow the main outline. Right? So you have the hardware system software and application software. Okay, so these are the things. Uh, we'll dis we are discussing this in ComSci 125. Uh, and we focus on the hardware. Actually, the, the, this one here, this area here, is the focus, focus on ComSci 132. Okay. So we know this already, the translation of uh, a high-level language program to the hardware presentation. Right. In this case, we have ARM V8, the instructions and architecture. In ComSci 131, we will be discuss the uh, 64, uh, x86-64 uh, instructions and architecture. So they are different, but they have uh, uh, but they do the same, some operations, basic operations. Right. So as I said, this is the processor. You have the control in the data path and the cache somewhere there. Okay. Uh, okay. So this one here. So this is an example processor inside the iPad. Okay. Okay. So we focus on the uh, concept of abstraction. Right. So uh, we were talking about the instruction set architecture like x86-64 and ARM in the previous slide. Uh, the idea there is that the instruction set architecture is some, some kind of an, of an interface. Okay? So for example, uh, how many of you ha have your, uh, instead of having an Intel processor, you have an AMD processor in your machine? AMD yung machine mo. So, 64-bit din siya. It un AMD understands uh, the 64-bit, x86, 64-bit instruction set architecture. Pero yung implementation niya, AMD ang gumawa. Yung Intel naman, kaya din siyang gumawa ng, in-implement niya rin yung ISA ng x86, 64. Intel naman yung nakalagay din sa processor niya. So, you think of ISA as an inter interface. And then, the implementation will be different for every vendor. So, mas mura halimbawa yung AMD kumpara sa Intel. So that's the idea, okay? And uh, the application binary interface is basically the ISA plus the software interface, okay? Uh, the system uh, uh, software support for that particular instruction set architecture, okay? So the compiler will generate, for example, the assembly code for that particular uh, instruction set architecture, okay? So you have to understand that concept, no? And yung ARM naman, uh, ARM architecture, 
may Broadcom na ano na, na implementer ng ano ng ARM processor, okay? so marami. Depende sa vendor, so is the implementation, right? So data also uh, we discussed that data also is important, okay? storage and networks, okay? so this will be discussed in COMSA 137. Local area network, basically, let's say a computer shop or a computer lab, you have a local area network. You extend it across building you have, or, or, or companies, you have one, and basically you have the internet, a very large collection of networks, and wireless. Okay. So, actually, this one, this here, uh, in the context of uh, computer architecture, are under input output. Okay. So, storage, uh, shown in the, in the diagram here. Okay. So, the network and the storage will basically uh, connect at this end of the uh, computer. Okay? So, shown here. So, it's also an important uh, aspect of understanding or uh, computer architecture because you have to support these kinds of devices. Okay? So, technology trends. Okay? So, uh, this graph here, this slide here shows the memory, main memory, DRAM technology. And as you can see, during the early days of the uh, compute, of computing, you have a very limited uh, amount of memory because the technology is quite, uh, for example, this one here is 1976. So you have an IC already, but still the uh, amount of data that can be stored in the memory is still very small. But in 2012, you have now a 4 gigabyte uh, DRAM main memory. Basically because of the uh, uh, evolution or the continuous improvement of uh, the technology, integrated uh, circuit technology, IC. Right? So that is also an important factor uh, considering the designing for more slow okay so every year the double yung pwede mong ipak sa isang area so i see so you get uh, improvement and basically you have this measure of relative performance per cost so of course the first uh, transistor is the vacuum tube right uh, quote in quote so this is the baseline so you compare that relative performance per cost so uh, you have uh, improvement in performance with a uh, smaller cost. Okay. That's the idea. So, now, eventually, uh, the computers will have to be implemented in a physical system. Okay. So, uh, the main uh, uh, support for that is semiconductor. Okay. So, uh, the main substance or element responsible for the development in the technology is semiconductor technology is silicon, right? So it's a, a semiconductor. So if you take it chemistry, okay, uh, you have a periodic table, and then there are some properties the way the elements are arranged in the periodic table. Uh, silicon is somewhere in between, so it can be a it can be actually, it's actually, it's not actually a good uh, conductor. Kasi uh, sa computer kailangan represent yung 1 in zeros, di ba? Okay? So you need some form of switching element. How do you turn on, turn off? So the silicon is a, a material that is not basic, by default not a conductor. But if you mix it with other, other uh, elements, it can be, it can be, uh, it can behave in different ways. It can be a conductor, if you mix it with copper, for example. It can be an insulator, for example, the, uh, yung mga, mga salamin, right? So usually, meron yung silicon, right? galing sa sun. And then you have the switch. The switch is ones and zeros. It can, it can be turned on, it can be turned off. So that is what is being taken advantage of uh, when it comes to uh, implementing uh, uh, chips. Okay? Basically, you use silicon because if you mix it with some processing, it can be a switch. Okay? Turn it on or turn it off. So, how does, uh, how are these uh, ICs? ICs are integrated circuits or chips. Right? How are they created? So, in the book, this is the outline shown. So, you have uh, 
this silicon uh, ingot or something and then this is a 3D uh, cylindrical actually okay? and then it will be sliced okay? By, and it will be something like this so para kang bumili ka ng baling okay? tapos sihiwain mo lutuin mo okay? so, yeah. and then you have the blank uh, wafers and then merong gagawing processing dyan okay? so chemical processing to make uh, lalagi, uh, process na yan and then uh, it will be uh, divided into uh, these rectangular regions okay? and then uh, it will so nandyan yung ano dyan ilalagay yung uh, mga circuits okay? so uh, nan nanometer uh, dimension okay? so maliit talaga yan then you have the wafer tester so yung iba dyan gagana yung iba hindi so pag dinaan mo sa wafer tester there will be some uh, uh, items there or die there that will not be working so that will be uh, removed later so eventually tat ano hin yan uh, hati hati ina yan hanggang maging rectangular regions like this so you ha it will go from the dicer this will be the output so individual chips na yan and then the others will be removed those uh, who are, which are defective, okay? may mga sira-sira halimbawa, syempre, process yan eh. So, there's always a possibility of uh, may, may mga defects. Okay? And then, it will be bonded to a dye package. And then, uh, after this, let's say, these are individual cores, it will be uh, tested again, and then, it will be shipped to customers. Okay? So, uh, maybe we can watch a video of that, how Intel does this to YouTube. Okay, so how is this done? Ten years ago. Let's, <coughs> Let's look at this. So, sand. <laughs> Sun to silicon. Okay, so, yun yung purpose ng deserts. Okay. This is a very short video. So, ininit niya. Okay. Minold niya into uh, some form of... Uh, okay. Okay, so, this is the ingot part. Okay. <laughs> ano yun? Parang basyadong ano yun? Ano? Violet. <laughs> Hiniwa. So, this is the, ano, the wafer. Okay. And, uh, so, it will be passed on to different processes. So, the how is done. So you have the individual wafers there. So you have the circuitry being built there. So Intel is one of the uh, uh, largest, I think largest manufacturer of uh, x86 processors. So it will be cut again into the die, right? It will be picked up one by one. Right? So it will be checked for defects. This one, one die. Based on that, then you now have the processor. Okay. And Intel. Okay? So that's how it's done. Okay? So, okay, Bayon? So that's an example of how this, uh, this process, okay? how Intel does that. You can actually watch uh, some videos inside the uh, environment on how Intel uh, in the clean room of, uh, of Intel. I can watch some videos uh, uh, from YouTube. Right? So that's basically those are the steps taken to uh, get your, if you open your, if you buy, if you assemble your own uh, setup, uh, you buy a separate processor and that's what you can place it on the motherboard. Right? So this is an example i7 wafer. Okay. So notice the dimension is a 32 nanometer technology. 
the video a while ago it says is 22 so the dimension is basically uh, getting smaller so cost how does uh, how do you how much right, does this cost so these are some of the parameters that uh, are used to compute the cost so the cost per die okay will be uh, equal, equal to the cost per wafer divided by the dice per wafer multiplied by the yield and the dice per wafer will be uh, this one is the actual value but the dice per wafer will be uh, wafer area divided by die area this is an approximation why because this is uh, circular so there will be some areas here which will not actually be uh, will not be working so uh, that's why it's just an approximation okay and then the yield is determined uh, experimentally okay so this will be the formula so that's why uh, the processors or the the chips that you buy usually will be costly because of this uh, cost okay. okay so yeah so are there questions about the importance of that? Just an overview of how these chips, how these processors are created. Besides that, okay. Now we move on to uh, performance. So whenever you buy a new computer, you all the uh, the salesperson will always tell you, ah, uh, if you go to a shop, uh, I five na yan, ma'am. I seven na yan, sir. And if you buy a, a cell phone, say. Uh, octa uh, octa Korean, okay? So, and you wonder if you are an ordinary user doesn't know about computers. Wow, octa core, eight cores yan. So, ah, maganda yan. Bibilihin mo na without even considering whether, whether your usage will e even uh, take advantage of those eight cores, right? If you're just using for SMS or some watching watching YouTube videos, then maybe you don't need those. Eight cores. So, uh, the idea of performance somehow is uh, relative. Okay? Uh, in the book, uh, uh, it gives an example on how to measure performance comparing it to uh, airplane. Okay? So, you have here different parameters regarding airplane. So, you have uh, four, uh, four planes and you have different metrics like passenger capacity cruising range, uh, cruising speed, and passengers multiplied by uh, miles per hour, I think. Okay. So, if you are asked, if you are asked basically to determine, uh, pag tinignan nyo to, ano yung pinakamabilis dito? Uh, ano, sa dito. So, when you, you say mabilis, ano, ang pinakamabilis dito ay yung cruising range, di ba? Yung concord. Okay. Ah, then, uh, that, that, the cruising speed. Okay. So this one here. Okay. Ah, uh, no, no. This one. Okay. So what happens is, to isa kaso yung comfort, ano siya, limited lang yung pasahero niya. Okay. So, magbilis nga siya kung isa lang yung, ano, isa lang yung ihahatid mo. Pero, kung marami kang ihahatid, syempre, kung Concord ang gagamitin mo, pabalik-balik ka, di ba? Para ihatid yun sa 100 passengers. So, that will not be quite effective. So, when you measure performance, pwede rin na yung passenger capacity yung gagamitin mo, 7 for 7. Kasi yung 100 na yun, isang pasada lang, madadala mo na agad sila. So, that is also the context of uh, defining performance here in terms of in computing, okay? So, yung tawag doon, yung, when it comes, yung, yung pag-concord yung ginamit mo para maghatid ng isang pasahero, that's called, uh, somehow, yung, parang, yung parameter na yon yung cruising speed, that will be the, the response time. How long does it take to do attack? So, pag nag, let's say, pag nag-GCC ka, how long does it take to perform GCC, uh, to compile a program using GCC? That's the response time. Okay? So, how long does it take to do a task? Or for example, you're compiling Firefox, or you're building your own executable na Firefox, or you're, you're building a kernel, uh, a Linux kernel, 
Okay? So how long does it take to do that? Or you're downloading a file, how long does it take to do that? Okay? So that is called response time. So that's one uh, parameter. Another one is throughput. So total work done per unit time. So this is equivalent to using the uh, 747 to transfer passenger from one place to another. Okay? So you have, sabihin natin na medyo mabagal siya, but in terms of being able to move a lot of passengers per unit time, that is uh, the 747 has higher throughput. Okay, get the idea? So in computing, it depends on uh, on on the use, right? Uh, or on the needs, basically. In, for example, if you have a web server, right? if you have a web server, somehow you need to balance response times and throughput, right? If you have an e-commerce site, Lazada, for example, right? So you have to balance. Uh, Lazada should be able to uh, cater to, let's say, uh, let's say November sale to be able to. Uh, process all uh, purchases or uh, shopping and at the same time the performance the response times for each individual user should not be uh, affected also okay so that's basically the idea okay and uh, how are response time and throughput affected okay? by uh, replacing the processor with a faster version so normally uh, uh, yung cellphone yung halimbawa after a while marirealize yung parang ang bagal na okay so bibili kayo ng bago tama di ba yun yung parang progression gaano katagal kayo nag-stick sa isang cellphone maliban na wala may marirealize ka na bumabagal na siya di ba sa tingin niyo so you replace it you buy another and with a faster version okay and somehow the response time will be affected okay so marami ka ma-fulfill mo yung improvement, okay? And also, uh, adding more processors can also affect response time and throughput, okay? Pero most of the time, throughput yung ano eh, throughput yung naapektuhan pag uh, nag-add ka ng additional processors, okay? Uh, in some scientific applications, if you add more processors, actually, response time nag-ano din, nag uh, nag improve din. Okay. So for example, uh, if you're doing crypto mining, okay, so an ordinary PC, okay, if you're mining for Bitcoins, will not be effective. So you need to buy a dedicated GPU or some uh, specific FPGA or ASICs to be able to uh, do some computations para maunahan nyo yung ibang nagmamine din para makuha nyo yung uh, cryptocurrency. Okay. So that's the idea. So we focus on uh, the response time. So how do we measure performance? Okay. So when we talk of performance, we need to have values. We, ha we need to have numbers. Okay. So uh, in the book, uh, performance is defined as uh, one over the execution time. So time yung ano? Time yung uh, uh, measure natin, execution time. So you. Uh, you think of programs. You have a program, you run it, okay? Uh, have you tried measuring the runtime of your programs in, uh, no, in 21 or something? Meron pa yung code dun, di ba? Na measure niyo yung time, okay? So, that's called the execution time. And yung performance is actually inversely proportional, proportional to execution time. Meaning, uh, uh, the higher the execution time, the performance is basically lower. Right? So here, is, in this, this statement, x is n times faster than y. That means uh, the performance x over the performance y is equal to uh, the execution time of y over the execution time of x, which is equal to n. So, this statement, pag nakarinig kayo ng statement na x is n times faster than y, ito yung ibig sabihin yan. So, yung performance ni x divided by the, perf over the performance ni y, if you use this formula, since uh, inversely sila proportional, so, it's basically execution, execution, execution time ni y divided by the execution time ni x 
yun yung n. Okay? You get this idea? Okay? So, an example is shown here. Let's say you have, you are given a program, Hello World program. Okay? If you run that Hello World program in computer A, 10 seconds. If you run that Hello World program in computer B, 15 seconds. So, how do you make this statement? So, to do that, you simply divide the execution time of B, which is 15 seconds, divided by the execution time of on A, which is 10 seconds, so you have 1.5. So, you can say that A is 1.5 times faster than B. So, you get the idea? So, if I have a Hello World program, I ran that Hello World program in this computer. I measured the time. So, I5 yata to. Okay? And then, niran ko yung Hello World program na yun sa Raspberry Pi. Okay? Uh, iba yung time nun. Okay? As si Sir Aryan kahapon, trinay niyang ano, uh, sa cellphone na mag-compile ng tinuturo niya sa 21. Okay? So, pag niran niya yung Hello World program na yun dun sa cellphone, measure niya yung time, iba rin yung makukuha niya. Okay? So, you will be able to bring the uh, performance uh, and make this particular statement. So, pwede niyo gawin yan. Uh, measure niyo yung time sa laptop, sa and then you can make such statements. Okay? So, that's called relative performance. Okay? Again, the, the, you, time, you, the, the metric is time. Okay? Time. Now, the question now is, how do you measure the... Ito ay relative performance. So, you have two, da two, two data points. Okay? Now, how do you measure the execution time? As, as, I, as I, I mentioned, may mga tools to measure the execution time. Okay? So, when you run a program, dash slash, kung ano man yung pro dash dash hello, it will execute and then you get the time. Okay? So, there are actually several type of types of time. The first one is called the wall clock time or the elapsed time. Ito yung ginagawa sa 21 kung nag-measure kayo ng time. It's called the elapsed time. The moment na in-start mo yung process, nag-execute yung process, and then nag-termine, uh, nag-dash last ka, di ba? Sa, sa OS, ilo-load yun ng operating system, allocate ng memory, and then mag-jump dun sa first instruction, execute the instruction one by one, and then terminate the process, babalik ka sa shell prompt, command prompt. Okay, yung time na yun, yung tinatawag na elapsed time or uh, wall clock time. Okay? So, nandun yung processing, yung I.O. So, lahat-lahat na. The moment na nag dash dash ka, tapos yung lumabas yung command prompt uli, yun yung elapsed time. Okay? So, maraming involved dun. But if you're only interested in measuring the time na yung program mo ay nag in execute sa CPU, that's called the CPU time. Okay? So, the time spent processing a given job uh, and it does not include I.O. time, it does not include other job shares. Okay? In ComSci 125 or in operating systems, usually programs will, do, will, do, may, will mainly do two things. They are running on the CPU or they are waiting for I.O. We call that as uh, I.O. CPU burst in operating systems. Okay, so what you're interested in measuring CPU time is CPU burst. Okay? For example, executing uh, addition, subtraction, and other basic uh, compute operations without doing I.O., without calling system calls. Okay? So system calls are part of the operating system. Okay? So if you have a program that adds two numbers, accepts input from the user, and then adds the two numbers and then outputs the two number, you only measure yung pag-add ng two number. Yung system call na pag-input sa pag-output sa screen will be part of the operating system separate thing. Right. So it actually comprises user CPU time and system CPU time. Right. So I was mentioning a while ago is about user CPU time. So System CPU time is the one is the time spent by the operating system on the CPU, for example. So uh, uh, I, I will introduce that here. Uh, in operating system, we have the user mode and kernel mode. Right? So uh, a program running in user mode will be executing 
uh, and will be consuming CPU time and the operating system when the uh, when a process is running in kernel mode which actually in the operating system it's the uh, system CPU time right so that is very important distinction that you need to consider right are your questions so yeah so <coughs> Given these two parameters, elapsed time and CPU time, uh, we also introduce CPU clocking. So in COMSI 130, uh, there are certain types of circuits. Actually, it's the clock that drives the execution of programs. Okay, so uh, <coughs> uh, the operation of digital hardware is governed by a constant, uh, constant rate clock. Okay. So, it's called a uh, clock, cycle, clock cycle or clock tick. So, when you buy a processor, okay, you will have here a description of <coughs> the frequency. Okay. So, clock cycle, clock tick. So, this one is... Uh, 2747.634 megahertz so 2.7 gig okay, gigahertz okay. so yun yung parang clock rate nya so yun yung parang uh, the higher this clock rate basically the faster the computation will be okay? kasi siya yung nagda-drive ng circuitry ng uh, uh, ng computer okay? so uh in terms of waves, so you have uh, this one, the clock period, and the number of cycles is actually called frequency. Okay? Cycles per second, actually, so it's called the frequency. So how much, how many cycles per second? So the, kanina, yung 2007, so cycles per second, yun, yung unit na hertz. Okay? So the clock period is the duration of a clock cycle. Okay? So but we have a digital system on off on off okay so may uh, may gagawin may mawala okay so uh, if you recall in comsi 130 by input do na clk diba so mga circuits we'll discuss that later we'll, we'll review that later <coughs> and yun in kung gaano kabilis yun that will basically drive the computation and updating of state so within the clock period magpe-perform yun ng computation and then uh, diba may mga edge triggered pa something Okay. So, yun yung pag-store ngayon ng state. Okay. So, sa clock period perform the computation, uh, yung signals niyan, iikot. we'll discuss this later when we talk about the uh, data path design. Okay. Uh, yun. Uh, perform yung computation, store the state after ma matapos yung computation. Okay. So, basically, the higher, the higher the clock rate, the faster, okay, you can be, you will be able to perform computation. So that's one trick. Kung naalala nyo yung, inabot, inabot nyo pa yung mga 386, 486. Pag inan nyo yung computer, may nakalagay doon na parang clock rate niya, di ba, yung megahertz. Tapos merong button doon na turbo, na, na ano nyo ba yun? Na pag clinic mo yun, tataas yung, ano, tataas yung uh, frequency, and then clock frequency, and then bibilis yung ano, processor mo. So nowadays, ano, meron pa rin ngayon sa i7, meron pa rin ngayon, pero automatic na yun. Depending, parang dati kasi manually mo i-on yung turbo eh. Pero halim, dahil nga, dito, we talk about power, the power wall, okay, uh, nag a adjust na siya dynamically. Ibig sabihin, nag-improve na yung processor design that kung kaya niyang mag-turbo mode, pwede siyang mag-turbo mode. So, titingnan nyo dito, nalagay dito ay 3.2 gigahertz, tapos dito, uh, meron dito ang ano minimum saka maximum di ba so yan yung pwede niyang ano pero kumbaga at standard operation ito yung kanyang uh, clock frequency pero it can go up as high as 3.4 gigahertz okay so that's what we mean by that so that's also uh, uh, an important factor in uh, Compute, uh, computing. So, always remember na nagmamatter yung ano yung clock frequency because it drives the circuitry when you go back to the logic design or to the digital design. So, <coughs> CPU time. So, sabi natin last time for for a, for a particular program, this is the amount of time 
is spent by the program running on the CPU, executing instructions supported by the instructions of architecture, add, move, jump, etc. Okay? So CPU time is computed as uh, the CPU clock cycles multiplied by the uh, clock cycle time. <coughs> okay? And uh, it can be converted okay, into CPU clock cycles okay, uh, then the clock rate. Okay? So looking at this equation, the CPU time can be improved by reducing the number of kasi ang gusto natin sa CPU time ay uh, Mababa, di ba? So, kasi yun yung ano natin, eh, yun yung measure natin. The smaller the value, okay yan. Okay? So, uh, we can do that by reducing the number of clock cycles. Okay? Kasi yun yung numerator niya. Okay? Increasing the clock rate. Okay? So, yun yung operation na yun. Kaya sabi natin, pag sinig mo yung turbo, in-increase mo yung clock rate, then the CPU time will increase. Okay? And you can also reduce the number of clock cycles. Okay? So remember, ito yung ano, ito yung uh, uh, formula ng ano, ng uh, clock cycle. Okay? So you just reduce this, reduce the number of clock cycle. Then basically, uh, you get a, a high, a lower CPU time. Okay? So the hardware designer must often trade off clock rates against cycle count. So binabalance niya kayo to uh, cycle count. So, kung magdi-design ka ng ano, ng processor, parang ang gusto mong mangyari is pwede mong taasan yung clock rate or yung mga dinidesign mo para mag-perform ng operation, bawasan mo yung clock cycle na kailangan doon. So, di ba, mag-perform ka ng add. Instead of using, let's say, five clock cycles, you simply use two clock cycles. So, you get the idea? So, that's what we mean by that. Okay, so, example. Okay. CPU time example. So, si computer A, meron siyang 2 gigahertz clock and then meron siyang 10 seconds na CPU time. Okay, so, computer A. Okay. So, in designing for computer B, okay, so you are asked to design for com uh, computer B, uh, what you want to do is, ang problem dito is, ano yung clock rate na kailangan mo para kung gusto mong ma-achieve na instead of 10 seconds CPU time, magkaroon ka ng 6 seconds CPU time. Okay? So, by looking at this, you will always be able to... Dalawa yung pwede mong baguhin, di ba? Yung CPU cycle, saka yung clock rate. So, here, we are asked to uh, find the clock rate. Okay? So, can do faster clock, but causes one... So, if you increase the uh, clock, okay? Uh, it will cost 1.2 more of the clock cycle. So, how fast must computer be, uh, uh, be, uh, clock uh, B clock B? Okay. So, using the formula, so yung clock rate, so ito lang, uh, since itong tatlong to, i-manipulate nyo lang naman yan, arithmetic. Okay, so the clock rate of B is equal to the clock, cy uh, clock cycle B, CPU time of B. So, ito yung mali-derive mo. Okay. Kasi sabi dito, yung clock cycle ni B will be 1.2 more, the clock cycle of A. Okay? And then the CPU time is 6S. So, you can get the clock, uh, given ka ng uh, clock cycle ni A, uh, you can get the clock cycle of A, so using this formula, okay? and then you can derive now the clock rate, which is basically 4 B, which is 4 B. So, you should be here, in order for computer B to achieve the 6 second CPU time and uh, have a 1.2 more clock cycle of A, then the clock rate should be 4 gigahertz. Okay? Get the idea? So, yeah. Are there questions? Okay. So, what is important here is basically we're trying to quantify yung performance. What do we mean by performance and at the lower level, what do we, uh, how do we measure this performance? What are the parameters? What are the metrics? Uh, this is at the hardware level because in ComSci 1, 2, 3 or in ComSci 1, 4, 2, we are taught about uh, yung asymptotic 
iba yung performance ng algorithm. But eventually, you have to implement them into some low-level language. Or actually, in the machine language, they have to run on the machine. So they will be composed of instructions, and there are other parameters involved, right? other methods. Right? So, uh, so this one, uh, CPI. Uh, siguro next meeting na lang to, yung CPI. CPI is clock cycle per uh, instruction. So kanina, sinabi ko kanina yung add, di ba? Uh, yung add, uh, let's say, pag mag-perform ka ng add at the circuit level, you will need five clock cycles para ma makuha mo yung operands, makompute mo yung sum, tapos may store mo yung, ano, yung, yung value. Okay? So kung five clock cycles yun, pwede mong i-improve by using three clock cycles. Now, yung CPI actually is an average, okay? So, parang average siya ng uh, number, average number of clock cycles for a given set of program. And we'll discuss this later. Okay, so please pass your paper uh, for the quiz and uh, continue next week.